Welcome to chapter six. Chapter six is a very important chapter that you understand uh, market segmentation, marketing mix. Um, understand that th these are kind of the essential building blocks of marketing and understanding in, from an advertising sense, understanding exactly who you're talking to. And this is so important because think about in your own personal life, if let's say you were given uh, the task of talking to a group or you were asked to give a talk about advertising because I know you're taking an advertising class. Well, you do know a few things, but probably the first question that you would want to ask is, well, to whom am I speaking? Am I speaking to a, a group of grade school children, uh, middle schoolers, high school people, business owners? Who is my audience? Okay, well, that's the job of market segmentation. Okay, we segment the market based upon a number of characteristics that the chapter covers, which I'll, I'll go over a few here just so you have a, a running idea at this. But that's you, the reason you do this is to create a profile so you understand kind of the persona or uh, the typical customer that you're targeting. Then you can design the communication side or the advertising side to appeal to them because you know what words and that they understand and don't understand what's meaningful to them. Because the whole goal here is to be understood, to inform and persuade. So let's let's look at a couple things that have to do with uh, segmentation as you read through this. So it defines it. The chapter's laid out really well, uh, as they all are. But here's a four groups of consumer behavior. So segmenting the market, dividing it up. Because so for example, why would we need to segment the market for watches? Well, all you have to do is ask yourself: Is the price for a watch the same? no matter who makes it, or are all watches the same price? And the answer is clearly no, because not all watches are meant for everyone. At the top end of the market, you might have custom-made or handmade watches like a Rolex or an Omega, and at the lower end, you might have watches, and those watches might be tens of thousands of dollars at the high end. They keep time. That's their primary job. That's their function. Okay, well, the, that market has different sets of variables behavioristic, geographic, demographic, psychographic, the psychology behind things. Um, and at the lower end of the market, you might go into a convenience store and buy a cheap plastic watch because you just need it for the day or you want to throw it away when you're done because you're going to paint or whatever, uh, and it's $5 or $10. Well, there's a gulf between those two, but they both function essentially. They both do the same thing, but the reasons people buy them are different. And this is why we segment those markets to figure out the characteristics of who we're trying to sell to. And so that's what really segmentation, because um, this is why this chapter and the chapter before, uh, chapter five, are tied together. We do this along with the uh, consumer behavior research in order to figure out exactly who we're selling to and what motivates them. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. So, the chapter goes through, and it does a very, again, a very nice job of this, of laying out the various ways to segment markets. Now, there's lots of different choices. So you might ask, and rightfully so, which ones do I use? Well, you want to use enough to get a meaningful profile. The higher you go into segmentation, like behavioristic and psychographic, which is more behavioral, as you might guess, the consumer behavior side, you probably want to do that for a more lifestyle products such as the high-end watches or jewelry or exotic vacations, things that are very expensive, much more emotionally driven or an emotional component to it. Now, that doesn't mean there's none at the low end. It just means it's a different ratio, and that's why we need to figure this out. So as you go through this, uh, the, the, the clues or cues that you receive from understanding who you're selling to are then translated into advertising copy, spoken, written word, um, videos, images, colors even. There's a host of different things. Because remember, the goal is to be understood and to motivate, inform and motivate. What do we want the market to do after they read, see, hear, experience an ad as they touch a product or a brand? So as you read through this, carefully understand that. Take some notes. These are two very important chapters. If you understand these two chapters, you're going to go a long way to understanding uh, everything else much more clearly. And um, let me just go a little bit farther. 
yeah, that just details everything very nicely. And remember, we're trying to draw a persona or create a, you know, are we selling to men or women? Are we, what age are they? The demographic information. Um, you know, where do they live? How much money do they make? And so on and so forth. So uh, this is a means to an end. It's drawing a profile of our target so we can better communicate to them and better design the product initially. So that should be enough to get you going. Uh, enjoy your read again. As soon as you're done, start working on the, the discussion, the quiz, and prepare yourself for the midterm, which is coming quickly, uh, but keep studying. So take care. If you have questions, please let me know.